Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is lecture 10 of uh, the course Fundamentals of Database Systems. And as you can see from uh, the title, uh, I will talk about relational database model and revisit this model again to give some theoretical information about this relational database model. We have already covered uh, the practical part of uh, of it and as you can see also this is a summary for chapter 3 of the book database systems design implementation and management tens edition and these are the objectives of uh, this chapter uh, you will learn uh, the relational database model uh, offers logical view of data and about the relational model basic components uh, relations and relations are logical constructs composed of rows or tuples and columns attributes and the relations are implemented as tables in a relational database management system and also uh, you will learn about relational database operators and the data dictionary and the system catalog and also how data redundancy is handled in the relational database model and uh, will give some idea about indexing um, so a logical view of data the relational model uh, view data logically rather than physically physically means how data is actually stored inside the computer uh, but here in the relational model uh, we look at the data logically that means how this data is related to each other and how is it manipulated uh, regardless of the way it is stored inside the computer and of course the logical view is very different from the physical view and uh, the table <coughs> which is uh, the main component of uh, data in the relational model it is structural and data independence and resembles a file conceptually uh, because before the idea of databases uh, files were used to store and also to manipulate the data uh, using a computer program or application relational database model is easier to understand than hierarchical and network models which I have covered in uh, our previous lecture uh, tables and their characteristics uh, they are logical view of rela uh, relational database and uh, they are called relations also uh, relation thought of as a table table is a two-dimensional structure composed of rows and columns also we can say tuples and attributes and persistent representation of logical relation contains group of related entities or what we call entity set characteristics of a relational table uh, number one is uh, perceived as a two-dimensional structure composed of rows and columns and each table uh, row which we call also a tuple represents a single entity occurrence within the entity set each table column which is also called attribute uh, and uh, each column has a distinct name each intersection of row and column represents a single data value all values in a column must conform to the same data format each column has a specific range of values uh, known as the attribute domain the order of the rows and columns is immaterial that means it's not uh, uh, an issue uh, immaterial to the database management system uh, each table must have an attribute or combination of attributes that uniquely identifies each row 
Here is an example student table and the attribute values. The table name is student, and here are the attribute uh, as columns. We have a student number, a student last name, student first name, student initial, middle, and that means in the American system of naming, uh, you write your first name and your family name or what is called here last name and for your father name you write only the first letter which is called the middle initial the middle initial and here we have student date of birth and student uh, credit hours earned and st classification student classification and the grade point average for the student and if the student was transferred from another institution or another uh, faculty or department and also we have the department code and we have a four digit campus for an extension and uh, the number of professor who uh, who is a student advisor also in the American system for each uh, number of students they will have an academic advisor uh, who is usually one of their professors so this is an example for a table <coughs> this is from the database name uh, Kinney College so using the student table uh, shown previously you can draw the following conclusions corresponding to the points in, in, uh, in this table here okay so uh, first the student table is perceived to be two-dimensional structure composed of eight rows or tuples and 12 columns attributes each row in the student table describes a single entity occurrence within the entity set the entity set is represented by student table for example row 4 in the figure describes a student named Walter H uh, and given the table contents the student entity set includes eight distinct entities or rows of students each column represents an attribute and each column has a distinct name all of the values in a column match the attributes characteristics for example the grade point average std gba column contains only uh, entries for each of the table rows data must be classified according to their format and function although various database management systems can support different data types most support at least the following numeric uh, character and date and logical uh, which is true or false yes or no so the columns range of uh, permissible values is known as domain and uh, because uh, here because the gba values are limited to the range from zero to four uh, inclusively so the domain is uh, written like this the order of rows and columns is immaterial to the user and each table must have a primary key so in general terms the primary key which is written as BK is an attribute or combination of attributes that uniquely defines a, any given row in this case student number <coughs> is a primary key <coughs> using the data in the figure uh, uh, observe that student last name would not be good primary key because several students have the last name of smith even the combination of the last name and first name would not be an appropriate primary key because more than one student is named john smith so the keys let us uh, talk about keys each row in a table must be uniquely identifiable so the key is one or more attributes that determine other attributes the key role is based on determination that means if you know the value of attribute a 
you can determine the value of attribute b so this is called functional dependency okay so attribute b is functionally dependent on a if all rows in table that uh, agree in value for a also agree in value for b uh, will be written like this so student number determines student last name that means if i get the student number i can get the student last name uh, written like this here a student number is the determinant and a student last name is the dependent also you can say student number determines student last name and student first name and student gba uh, the types of keys uh, we have what is known as composite key this is composed of more than one attribute uh, the key attribute any attribute that is part of a key and here uh, for example student number determines a student gba and uh, student last name student first name student middle initial student phone all these determine the student hours so this is uh, an example for uh, uh, key attributes a super key this is any key that uniquely identifies each row so a student number i and student last name uh, and student uh, first name student middle initial and form uh, in this table here uh, student classification is based on the hours completed so student hours determine the student classification uh, the specific number of hours is not dependent on the classification for example a junior can have uh, 62 hours or 84 hours he is uh, the junior and here senior and here a fresh student or first uh, year student and so on uh, candidate key a super key without unnecessary attributes or minimal uh, for example a student number and student last name is a super key but not a candidate key the candidate key is usually the primary key so the primary key is a candidate key chosen by the designer to be the primary uh, means by which rows of the table are uniquely identified uh, uh, to ensure entity integrity each row which is an entity instance in the table has its own unique identity so each primary key has two requirements all the values in the primary key must be unique and no key attribute in the primary key can contain a null value so the null is uh, no value at all not zero or even space created when you hit the enter key or the tab key to move to the next ent entry without making an entry of any kind should be avoided in other attributes uh, null can represent the following uh, an unknown attribute value or known but missing attribute value or not applicable condition so uh, can create problems when functions such as count average and sum are used can create logical problems when relational tables are linked uh, so control redundancy uh, this makes the relational database work and tables within the database share common attributes enables tables to be linked together uh, multiple occurrences of values not redundant when required to make the relationship work redundancy exists only when there is unnecessary duplication of attribute values 
So here an example of a simple relational database. Here we have table name product, another table name vendor, and here, uh, as you can see here, this column vendor code is uh, links the two table. Okay, and here it is a primary key in this table. When we put it in another table. Uh, to link them is a foreign key so uh, foreign key an attribute whose values match primary key values in related table referential integrity foreign key contains a value that refers to an existing valid double or row in another relation so every entry in uh, vendor code in the product table has either a null or a valid value in vendor code in the vendor table and secondary key the key used strictly for data retrieval purposes and look up customer by last name and phone number when customer number is not unknown or is is unknown is not known uh, may not return unique uh, results and uh, look up by last name and city <coughs> so here we have uh, relational database keys uh, definition for each one super key candidate key primary key foreign key secondary key super key an attribute or combination of attributes that uniquely identifies each row in a table the candidate key a minimal or irreducible super key so a super key that does not contain a subset of attributes that is itself a super key. The primary key is a candidate key selected to uniquely identify all other attribute values in any given row and cannot contain null entries. Uh, the foreign key is an attribute or combination of attributes in one table and whose values must either match the primary key in another table or be null. And the secondary key, an attribute or combination of attributes used strictly for data retrieval purposes. Integrity rules. Uh, many relational database management systems enforce integrity rules automatically. Uh, safer to ensure that application design conforms to entity and referential integrity rules. Here is uh, a table uh, for integrity rules uh, for the entity integrity requirement and description. So uh, requirement all primary key entries are unique and no part of primary key may be null. The purpose each row will have a unique identity and foreign key values can properly reference primary key values. Example, no invoice can have a duplicate number, nor can it be null. In short, all invoices are uniquely identified by their invoice number. The differential integrity, uh, the requirement for uh, a foreign key may have either a null entry as long as it is not part of its table's primary key or an entry that matches the primary key value in table to which it is related. So um, every non null foreign key value must reference an existing primary key by value. The purpose of this it is possible for an attribute not to have a corresponding value, but it will it will be impossible to have an invalid entry. The enforcement of the referential integrity rule makes makes it impossible to delete a row in one table whose primary key has mandatory matching foreign key values in another table. Uh, example, a customer might not yet have an assigned sales representative uh, number, but it will, will be impossible to have an invalid sales representative number.
so here is an illustration of the integrity rules here uh, for example table customer and this is table agent here for this customer we don't have the agent code so in this case we will use what is known as a flag because since this column is a foreign key and is a primary key in this table here uh, it cannot be null it should contain a value but if the value is missing or not known at the time we will use a flag let us see what it mean by a flag uh, here uh, for integrity rules uh, designers use flags to avoid nulls null values flags indicate absence of some value and to replace null in customer table agent table must have an entry of uh, for example minus 99 in the agent code field here the agent code and of course the other values are missing here agent area code will be zeros and uh, also the phone number zeros the name none and uh, uh, here today sales uh, also will be zero so other rules uh, not not constraint for a column and unique constraint on a column uh, relational set operators uh, this is what is known as relational algebra we have already covered that but we are re revisiting it again so this defines a theoretical way of manipulating table uh, table contents using relational operators Use of relational algebra operators on existing relations produces new relations. We have select, project, join, intersect, union, difference, product, and divide. Uh, here for select, uh, suppose we have this original table. When we select all, uh, say select all, which is written as select asterisk, this is the result the same table all the table again to select only the price uh, less than this value it will give us this uh, uh, view to select only the uh, p code uh, equaling this uh, value it will give us this view so select yields all values for all rows in a table that satisfy a given condition it can also be used to list all rows in a table uh, yields a horizontal subset of a table uh, for project uh, here this is original table uh, when we say project on price it will give us this column uh, as a table uh, when we project uh, on description and price it will give us this and project on p code and price will give us this so it yields all values for selected attributes this is a vertical subset of a table and union for the union if we use the union operation for union is usually for two or more tables here is an example to make a union of these two tables it will yield this uh, view this combines all rows from two tables excluding duplicate rows and uh, the, the tables must have the same number of columns and their corresponding columns share the same or compatible domains that is union compatible and intersect here uh, for example intersection of this table and this table will give us uh, this view so yields only rows that appear in post tables and the tables must be union compatible that means have the same number of rows for the difference this difference this will give us this so it yields all rows in one table that are not found in the other table 
and subtracts one table from the other and the order of uh, the tables is uh, important and the tables are union compatible the product here uh, this table product this table will yield this table so yields all possible of rows from two tables also known as the Cartesian product the tables must have the same attribute characteristics Uh, relational set operators uh, the join allows information to be combined from two or more tables the real power behind the relational database uh, allowing the use of independent tables uh, linked by common attributes so two tables that will be used in join illustrations here we have this table customer and another table agent and we will use these two for the, the types of join so here we have national join this links tables by selecting rows with column values in column in common attributes and uh, first a product of the tables is created and second a select is performed on the result here from this result uh, to yield only the rows for which the agent code values are equal and the common columns are referred to as join columns then a project is performed on the results in the second step to yield a single copy of each attribute thereby eliminating duplicate columns so here are uh, the tables used this is the first step national join step one product of two tables and then from this product we select step two select okay and step three project the selection here to remove duplication uh, to remove the duplication and also here uh, to remove the duplication in uh, columns here first to remove duplication in rows duplicated rows are removed and here duplicated columns are removed by project so note that here we have agent code uh, this uh, nor the customer with the last name of uh, uh, Smithson is included as uh, this code does not match any entry in the agent table here let us go back a little here for this this yeah this agent code is not included in because we have no row here in the agent with uh, this data Relational set operators uh, Equijoin links tables on the basis of an equality condition that compares specified columns does not eliminate duplicate columns and join criteria must be explicitly defined uh, Theta join this is a comparison operator than other than equal is used uh, inner join only returns match records from the tables that are being joined so natural join equi join and theta join are inner joins uh, outer join this matched pairs are retained and any unmatched values in other table are left uh, null returns all match records as an inner join but returns the unmatched records from one of the tables useful in determining what values in related tables cause referential integrity problems and left outer join yields all of the rows in the customer table including those that do not have a matching value in the agent table and the right outer join yields all of the rows in the agent table including those that do not have matching values in the customer table 
so here are the uh, examples here left outer join between the two tables go back to the uh, tables and notice uh, the way it is used and this yields all the rows in the customer including those that do not have a matching value in the agent like this one here and uh, right outer join and this yields all the rows in agent including that do not have a matching value in the customer um, divide uses uh, one two column table as the dividend and one single column table as a divisor and the output is a single column that contains all values from the second column of the dividend uh, that uh, uh, eight, uh, eight associated with every row in the divisor so here an example when we say this divide this it will result in only one uh, cell here uh, the data dictionary and system catalog uh, data dictionary provides uh, detailed accounting of all tables found within the user or designer created database it contains at least all the attribute names and characteristics for each table in the system contains metadata which is which means data about data the system catalog contains metadata a detailed system data dictionary that describes all objects within the database uh, data about table names, uh, table creator and creation date and number of columns in each table, the data type of each column, the index file names, index creators, authorized users and access privileges. So here is an example of data dictionary. For example, table name customer. This table customer uh, these attributes customer code last name first name initial uh, renew date and the agent code and here are the contents for each uh, column and the first uh, customer customer code is customer account code uh, last name first name and so on and here is uh, the type for each column the type the data type the first one uh, characters with five similar characters with five uh, characters uh, var char date and so on and here also the format how uh, the values are written actually in the table and here the range if uh, the column has a range and uh, is it required uh, or not uh, that means is it uh, can it be null the three, uh, the first three columns cannot be null, but the remaining can be null. And uh, is it a primary key or foreign key for each column? And uh, the reference table for the primary key or foreign key. For example, we have here a foreign key referencing another table, which is agent code. And these are the information for the other table agent. And here is an explanation for uh, the samples used uh, FK for foreign key, PK for primary key, char, fixed character, length, data, and so on. Uh, the data dictionary and system catalog uh, we have what is known as uh, homonym, indicates the use of the same name to label different attributes. For example, we can use C name uh, for uh, customer uh, in a customer table for customer name and in a uh, consultant table for consultant name uh, synonym this is opposite of homonym homonym indicates the use of different names to describe the same attribute for example car we can say a car or auto and uh, relationships within relational databases uh, one to many relationship this is a relational modeling idea ideal 
should be the norm in any relational database design. One-to-one -one relationship should be rare in any relational database design. Many-to-many -many relationships cannot be implemented as such in the relational model. So the many-to-many -many relationships can be changed into one-to-many relationships. So the one-to-many relationship, this is a relational database norm and found in any database environment. And it is represented graphically like this. Uh, here, uh, for example, one painter can paint many paintings. This is all uh, notation used for uh, entity relationship, okay? And here, the implementation of this, the implementation for one-to-many relationship between painter and painting. So the primary key of uh, the one side is put into the many side as a column, which is a foreign key. So the one side here, let us go back. The one side is the painter and the many side is the painting. Here this is it indicates here this indicates many and this indicates one. So we'll take the primary key of the one side which is the painter and put it as a column in the painting and it will become a foreign key. And here in the painting here, the painting, the painter number. This is the primary key. We put it here as a foreign key. Uh, so, also a course and class. So, one course has many classes. So, uh, we put the primary key of the one uh, into the many. So, uh, the composite key, uh, course code, and uh, class section is a candidate key as together they uniquely identify each row here. In, uh, in this table here for the class, the, the primary key is uh, consist, uh, consisting of two columns, the, the course code and the class section these two okay these are uh, uh, the two here yeah, the composite key uh, is a candidate key as together they uniquely identify each row so this is a candidate key for this table the one-to-one -one relationship uh, one entity related to only one other entity and vice versa sometimes means that um, entity components were not defined properly and could indicate that two entities actually belong in the same table and certain conditions absolutely require their use for example uh, one professor chairs one department chairs here means become the head of department and also a department is headed by one professor and here is uh, an example here the professor and here the department and the relationship between them is one to one as you can see here uh, we have taken the employee number which is uh, employee number of the professor which who is the head of the department the one to many relationship implemented by breaking it up to uh, produce a set of one to many relationships so avoid problems inherent to one to many relationship by creating composite entity includes uh, as foreign keys the primary keys of the tables to be linked is an example uh, a student can has many classes and a class uh, have many students so here uh, why not create the tables as below so here the, the wrong implementation of the one to many relationship between student and class here uh, this is wrong uh, cannot be like that 
because here we have redundancies that means we have uh, for example student number values occur multiple times student number here student number in this column and here repeated in this column uh, in the real world there would be more student information that be repeated like addresses for and so on also the class code has also redundant in uh, the class table also here the class code is also uh, repeated uh, here uh, in this table and this is also uh, redundancy so instead of uh, the previous uh, implementation uh, create a composite key for example enroll which uh, minimally contains the primary keys of both student and class or uses a new single attribute key as a primary key also known as an entity bridge or linking table so will generally contain other relevant information such as grade errand so here uh, enroll we inserted a new table we call it enroll and here converting the many to many relationship into two relationship of type one to many so here we have uh, enroll contains multiple occurrences of uh, the foreign key values but those controlled redundancies won't cause anomalies as long as referential integrity is enforced so there will be a relationship between student and enroll and another relationship between class and enroll and the two relationships are of type one to many and here uh, student enroll class and then course represented data redundancy revisited so data redundancy leads to data anomalies and can destroy the effectiveness of the database the foreign keys control data redundancies by using common attributes shared by tables crucial to exercising data redundancy control minimize data redundancies uh, do not eliminate them sometimes data redundancy is necessary ensure transaction speed and or information requirements using relational algebra to generate the information can make the system elegant but impractical and here is an example or this uh, explanation this is a small invoicing system and uh, here the line price is needed and despite the product price because the price changes over time and we need historical data so we have a line here the inventory uh, or invoice number and the product code could serve as a primary key for line but line number was added to keep track of the order the data were entered and served as reference for customer inquiries uh, we end by indexes and these are orderly arrangement to logically access rows in a table so all records won't be searched to find the one you are looking for the index key index reference point points to data location identified by the key unique index uh, this means index in which the index key can have only one pointer value uh, each index is associated with only one table so here is an example for the painting table indexes uh, so uh, this is a painting table and here are the indexes one two three uh, one uh, two four one two six and three six so uh, this is the painter number and here the pointers to the painting table rows these are indexes so one two three is in row one two and four one two six is in row three and five so this is an index and uh, to look up all the painting for a specific paint number the index so shows you exactly which records to look at here to look at one or two or four here if you have this number to look at three or five so codes relational database rules 
uh, in this year code published a list of uh, 12 rules to define relational database system products marked as relational that do not did not meet uh, minimum relation standards even dominant database vendors do not fully support these 12 rules so these are the rules you can read them for your own purposes and by this i end this lecture